everybody, welcome. Hey everybody, welcome back around the blog and grill. I'm your host Doug here with your video blog for January 20th, 2014. Hanging out with you here on a Monday night. It has been a great weekend, great weekend in sports. Saturday, one of the great college basketball days I've watched in a while. Sunday, of course, we had the NFL playoff games and just some NBA going on today. We got some good NBA games going on tonight if you want to catch some of those as well. I'll also tell you what I'm going to be watching tonight too. Might be a little surprising, but I got a team that I need them to prove it to me that they deserve to be where they are. So let's get to it. First, we're going to go around the shield and let's talk first about the Patriots and the Broncos. The Broncos on their way to the Super Bowl after taking down the Patriots in the game 26 to 16. We saw an interesting game, really. Tom Brady wasn't great. Didn't get into a real good flow. We saw him miss some open shots at some big time points. Didn't throw the ball great down the field. It was a perfect day for Peyton Manning. Manning threw for 400 yards, two touchdowns, controlled possession, controlled the clock, and that was the key for them. They came out. Um, Tom Brady got not very many possessions. Got I think three possessions in the second half. Um, Manning came out, threw the ball well found Julius Thomas, who was easily his favorite target, and showed that this team can control, and their finesse, which should come back to hurt them if they have to come back in a game, but if they get up in the, if they get in the lead, they can run the ball, and then they just basically go to Manning and let Manning finesse, throw it down the field to Decker, to Welker, to Thomas, to Thomas, to whoever he has to throw it to. Great game to watch, exciting game for sure, and the Broncos come out on top and head to the Super Bowl. The second game we saw was even better. Everybody came in saying Russell Wilson was struggling. Russell Wilson wasn't going to be able to get the job done. Wilson came out and played a heck of a game. He didn't throw for that many yards. He didn't have to, but he hit some big-time throws, his big prep pass to Jermaine Curse. Um, he threw for 215, one touchdown. He lost the fumble on the first play of the game. But really, if the 49ers did not have Colin Kaepernick, they would not even have been in this game. Kaepernick was there offense basically Kaepernick threw for 147 he ran for 130 so that's a total right there of 277 yards and their total yards in the game were 308 I mean come on these teams were so nip and tuck close both teams had 308 um, we saw similar yards for play total drives were similar it really came down to the passing game and um, the Seahawks were able to put enough pressure on Colin Kaepernick. Some of the time that pressure led to him running the ball, but other times we saw him get to him. They forced two big picks. They got two sacks on him. Um, Anquan Bolden was shut down basically. He had the one touchdown catch on a beautiful throw by Kaepernick. But the big play of the game had to be down at the end, and I knew it was going to come down to it. They were going to have to throw that goal line fade. And we've seen, once again, that Colin Kaepernick can really throw one ball, and that's the laser. He had to throw the goal line fade. He has to get that ball to the back pylon. Could not get it there. It was intermediate. Richard Sherman, why would you even throw at Richard Sherman? Richard Sherman tipped it down, and Smith came away with a tip, and Richard Sherman had a heyday with it. Richard Sherman was going off during his interview. Um, I, liked the, I liked the intensity. I liked what Richard Sherman said. Maybe went a little too far yelling at Aaron Andrews, but still, he showed what it has to be get, to get done, and Kaepernick now knows what he has to get done. That's two straight years. They've lost in a playoff game when Kaepernick cannot throw that goal line fade to Crabtree. Okay, He's got to get it to the back pylon. In the Super Bowl last year, we saw him overthrow it. This year, he underthrew it. Maybe next year, I'll have it. But Kaepernick showing strides. Russell Wilson looking better, and Marshawn Lynch just keeps on rolling. So the initial picks for the Super Bowl, um, right now I think it sets, I mean it's been all over the place, it's been two points for the Seahawks, it's gone back I think right now to one and a half for the Colts, so that'll be interesting to see what that line sits at. We won't talk a whole lot about the Super Bowl, we'll talk about it some on Friday, and I think it's going to come down to the weather, I mean if it's 40 and sunny, definitely the favorite recipe of the Broncos. But if it's 20 and snowy, I think the favorite sends back to the Seahawks, and it's going to be interesting to see what the Seahawks can do. All right, time to go to the NBA, the association. The Knicks continue to struggle today. They lose a bad game at home 
here on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, 103 to 80. Still, though, I mean, we've just seen this team struggle once again on defense. They're struggling to stop people from scoring. They're shooting terribly besides Mello. Mello, another 26 and 12, another double double game. Playing good. But other than that, they're really struggling. And one guy right now in the NBA that's not struggling, Kevin Durant. This guy is hot. If you get a chance to watch him, watch Durant play. He is hot. He dropped 54 last week in an exciting game between the Warriors and him. So Durant right now is the hottest player in the NBA to take a look at. Two games, if you want to watch some good action tonight, we got the Blazers and the Rockets at 8 o'clock um, on TNT. And then later on, my favorite player to watch right now is Steph Curry. And Steph Curry will be going at home against the Pacers. That game is at 10 o'clock tonight. So catch that game late if you get a chance. It should be a good one. That one's going to be at 1030. I love watching Curry. He's exciting to watch. Good passer. Above average passer, really. Above average shooter. And he can get in the lane and make some stuff happen. It's, he's fun to watch. To college hoop, Syracuse on Saturday taking down Pitt. And once again, it was a case of Syracuse making a run late, getting some stops. And Tyler Ennis. Came up big for them in their 59-54 win over Pittsburgh. And news out of Syracuse today. We've seen Dewan Coleman out the past couple games with his knee injury. He will miss the remainder of the season with his knee injury. He's going to undergo surgery this week. And he will likely be back next year. So we'll take a look at what happens with that. Before we close up the blog today, we're going to go quickly to the college basketball top 25 rankings. The polls just came out today. Still at the top, Arizona. Syracuse making a little stride. They got four first place votes in the AP, two in the coaches. Um, and right now I want to give you my team that's too low. And the team that I think is too low in these polls is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh sitting at number 20. They were 22, so they jumped up a couple spots. But I still think they're too low. This team is 16-2. and two, And they played a lot of good teams. And I think they should be higher. And they should be. The team that I think is too high, even though they only have one loss, is Villanova. But Villanova has beaten Kansas, but we've seen Kansas struggle. They beat Iowa. Iowa's not great, and they lost to a good Syracuse team in a blowout. So right now, I don't see Villanova. When I watched Villanova, they were very unimpressive. They didn't play good in the post. They didn't shoot. They shot the ball good against Syracuse in the first half, but they really didn't play good in the post. And they don't have good point guard play out of uh, Ryan Archie Diacono. So that's my problem with them. And my team to watch right now has to be Michigan, hanging out at number 21 in the AP Top 25. They're unbeaten in conference play, and they got a big game coming up this weekend against Michigan State. So watch that one as well. The game I said I was going to watch tonight, the game I'm watching tonight, Villanova and Creighton. Villanova at home, Creighton coming in. Doug McDermott, it's going to be fun to watch. I think this could be a proving point for Creighton. And Villanova could show their true colors tonight and really struggle against this Creighton team. All right, so Wednesday I will be back with my Pro Bowl team. I'm going to give my take on who Deion Sanders should be picking in the Pro Bowl draft, which will be on Wednesday night. I like the new thing. I think it will work out good. Also, we'll talk MLB free agency as Masahiro Tanaka will make his decision on Friday. We'll also talk a little NASCAR. NASCAR looking to make some changes to their chase format, so we'll talk about that as well. All that and more on the blog on Wednesday. Follow me on Twitter, YankeeBall at 415. We're also looking for a permanent platform to go blog expansion. Looking at Stitcher Radio for a possible weekly podcast. Let me know what you think. I'll let you know what's going on. Always remember to comment, question, subscribe to my page. Thanks for tuning in to the blog and grill. I will be back on Wednesday. Have a good Monday and Tuesday, and I will see you then.